SMG4. Recently, I've discovered the show for myself and I've gotten hooked on it. Although it's pretty goofy and filled with memes, it still manages to hold a steady plot to it, with interesting characters, great villains, and even greater ideas behind it. Though, I was decently confused at some points. You see, SMG4, the main character of the show, was in older episodes a typical protagonist. In more recent episodes, they seem to come off as antagonistic, dislikable. Now, I mean in ways that the episode points at, but in ways where SMG4 is clearly in the wrong at some points, and yet it's written off because he's the good guy. And same with SMG3, but in an opposite way. Sure, he's still a bad guy a lot, he's selfish, rude, but there'll be episodes where he does everything right, tries to be good or do the right thing, and is still punished by the cast or by life or even by SMG4. Now, I don't think it's bad writing, I mean, it could be, but given how good they've written things like Puzzle Vision, I think the show is building up something, and has been building up something for quite some time now. Because if you've noticed SMG3 being far more of a pushover in the series' modern era than way back when, or if you've noticed how cruel and malicious SMG4 has been as of late, then you're not alone, because I think this is leading us to its very own arc very soon. This is the Contempt Theory. So first things first, we'll need to establish that SMG4 has become a worse friend, which isn't very hard so long as you look beyond just the surface level. Hell, some of them are surface level. Let's look at the episode Trash Friends. In this episode, we open learning that SMG3's cafe is going out of business. Suddenly, SMG4 comes in saying that they lost their special Michael Jordan endorsement video. SMG3 sees this as an opportunity to save his cafe from being shut down and decides to help. However, not only do they get locked in the dump, but Mario accidentally swallows the hard drive containing it. Throughout the episode, there's several lines of dialogue that show SMG4 is purposefully antagonizing SMG3 and almost certainly knows that their business is failing and wants to rub it in his face despite just earlier calling them friends. Obviously, since it was so good, he wanted to promote my channel. I'm sure you understand how big that is since you've got your own business now. How's that by the way? Oh, the business? It's big. Business is just big right now. Really? I was there earlier and it was completely empty. Well, Mars right behind this wall. And I'm finally gonna get the attention I deserve and prove to everyone that you're just the worst version of me! <laughs> I just... I need it, okay? No, you don't. You're being selfish. All you ever think about is yourself. Just let go! Okay! Okay? Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. I'm doing fine! My shop is always flooded with customers. I'm so successful. Nobody is ever throwing my coupons in the garbage. And I definitely don't feel like the worst version of you that lies to pretend he's doing fine. We friends though. Of course they do their little, oh I'm sorry and make up. But then after they get the USB and get home, they find it wasn't a Michael Jordan endorsement at all. But SMG4 says something very interesting here. What the hell was that? I thought you said it was a Michael Jordan endorsement! I thought it was! At least that's what it said in the email. <coughs> oh, wait, the email said this was Michael Jordan endorsement. Now, you might not have caught that at first, but think really hard in that sentence. At least that's what it said in the email. If it was an endorsement video, why was it sent to him as a USB? Wouldn't it be much easier and less expensive to just send the video itself through email too? The USB was never sent to him. He made this entire situation to mess with SMG3. And if you don't believe me from that, why does he have the email printed out? He calls it an email, but he has it in paper. Now sure there's some people out there that print their emails, but who goes through the effort of printing out an email only to not read it? And that's not even touching at the beginning any of the episode where we see why it was at the dump. If it was emailed to him, why is he just walking around with the USB and email? And when he dropped it and it flew into the trash, we see him go after it for a bit, sure. But then why go to SMG3 about it? Especially given that when SMG3 does come with, he just keeps pointing out his failing business and generally being a mean friend. If he was ever genuinely wanting that USB back, I don't think he'd be bullying the one other person who could and would steal it. And that's not the only episode. Even with some of the other cast members, SMG4 has been shown to be significantly crueler to them as of late. In the most recent video as of recording, Mario gets stuck as a GIF, SMG4 and Mario are walking together when they find a controller that forces Mario to involuntarily emote. When Mario is first forced to dance, he begins panicking, but SMG4 brushes it off. That is, until he realizes what it's doing. You'd think 
think, given his characterization in the past, that he'd be concerned or try to help Mario, but instead SMG4 becomes ecstatic. Finally, after embarrassing him, he only relents after Mario becomes too sad for it to be funny. While he says that he'll stop, however, he forces him to dance again not long after, causing him to get bitten by a dog. Despite again looking regretful, he brings the controller with him to the castle, likely planning to use it again. This backfires where the controller goes missing, causing Mario more and more grief throughout the day. One of these random things is a funeral, where Mario was forced to dance during it, which everyone gets mad at him for, including SMG4 for some reason, who knows he can't control it. Shouldn't he be explaining to everyone that Mario isn't controlling his actions, that he's being forced to dance instead of scowling at him like everyone else? This leads to Mario becoming so desperate that he wants to end his own life. Quote, maybe some bombs will make Mario suffering it. In the end, it's found out that Egg Dog, SMG3's pet, stole the remote, unbeknownst to SMG3, though once he sees it as a way to further help his business, he wants a piece of the action too. Though they quickly find that the remote is actually a prototype from Nintendo, and must defeat Miyamoto to make him fix Mario. In order to fight Miyamoto, SMG4 unprompted puts SMG3 into the system, making him also unwillingly do these gifts too to fight them. The thing is, for the most part, everything the emotes make you do are things you can do in real life. It just repeats them uncontrollably. He just does this to force SMG3 to fight Mario, all the while he is the main cause of all this. By the end, Miyamoto is defeated, though during it, SMG3 is turned into a flower pot, and he's never turned back. It'll all be reset by next episode and everything, but I imagine SMG3 doesn't want nor consent to being a flower in a vase with no arms. In SMG4 Are You Okay, SMG3 decides to do a 24-hour livestream in a burning building at the beginning of his video, to which SMG4, upon seeing this, takes upon himself to call him midstream and tell him how challenge videos are so 2019. Now, because he thinks they're old, SMG3 should stop and do something he likes, such as spinning for 10 hours. When SMG3 refuses and winds up getting so many views that Mr. Yeast wants to collaborate, SMG4 begs for SMG3 to put a good word in about him. SMG3 eventually does after having them help with camera op, though when Mr. Yeast refuses, this spirals SMG4 into the It's Gotta Be Perfect arc, where he sealed himself in his room to work non-stop on the perfect video, in which he refuses to stop to celebrate his best friend's birthday, and even summons a demon that destroys the castle and almost kills everyone. Not to mention that in this video, he enslaves several toads to work for them in making constant content, forcing SMG3 to cancel them so he stops. Though even after this, despite their history, SMG3 decides to try and help him out of his rut and get him to focus on quality instead of quantity. We also have probably the most obvious example seen in I Put Mario in Danger for Views, in which he doesn't actually put just Mario in danger, but instead everyone as he forces them to do Mr. Beast videos for free. He strands Bob at sea with no food, supplies, or anything else for a whole 10 years, and after 10 minutes, when Bob finds a slim bit of happiness due to growing a beard, SMG4 forces him to fight the Kraken, the Loch Ness Monster, and Godzilla in hopes that he dies. He also takes Mario, an old man and a baby, and demands they fight to the death to see what age is the mightiest, to which Mario gets decapitated. He has them all get buried alive by their pets, to which they obviously get distracted, leading them all being stuck underground in their own graves. This eventually leads them all getting arrested and put to death by electric chair, killing everyone. And these are just the more recent videos. And the bigger examples. There's a lot of smaller things too. In SMG4 doesn't meme for one second, he becomes so obsessed with a meme of a spinning halibut that he begins tormenting everyone with it, including at Boopkin's aunt's funeral. Which remember, he shamed Mario for doing a similar thing when he couldn't control it, and yet he feels like he can do it here, even outright mocking her death via text gif. In the very safe and legal SMG4 show, SMG4 is homeless due to the castle being destroyed and forces them all to train for a circus act so he can raise money for it, giving them all a mere four hours before the show. Remember, SMG4 is supposed to be the good guy protagonist, and SMG3 is supposed to be the evil, albeit reformed, antagonist. But even back then, there were several instances of SMG3 trying to be a good person, but being screwed over, usually by SMG4. 
and in War of the Fat Italians 2018, SMT3 tries a therapy show akin to Dr. Phil, except he actually has a degree in psychology. Thanks to his help, Waluigi forgives his brother and throws away his godlike rejection powers, which he had used to defeat the whole cast prior to this, and his aspirations of joining Smash, all within just three minutes of SMG3's services. This wasn't messed up by SMG4, but does show that SMG3 isn't just some evil clone of SMG4. On to Mario's spicy day, SMG3 makes Snitch Studio, a direct competitor to SMG4's Glitch Studio. He isn't doing anything evil, he's just making content, only for SMG4 to completely level the place, killing everyone inside simply because SMG3 hired a willing Mario and SMG4 found out. There's even a montage of SMG4 purposefully one-upping SMG3 every time he tries to live his own life. SMG3 has never really been that bad of a guy outside of his selfishness, jealousy, and delusional grandeur, but even then those traits are shared to some extent with SMG4. Just look at those examples from before! SMG4 was pretty selfish in that episode where he forced Mario to emote whenever he wanted. SMG4 was pretty jealous of SMG3 when he made the live stream and got collab and got so upset that he spiraled into obsession. SMG4 had big deluge of grandeur when he was expecting a higher turnout of views than Mr. Beast just by copying him and forcing his own friends into danger. So yeah, SMG4 has definitely begun losing that friend title. But for those of you who haven't seen the series before, you might be wondering, why are SMG4 and SMG3 friends? Well, we're explicitly given two main reasons and it's gotta be perfect. The first reason is because he understands his struggle, as SMG3 relates strongly with the thoughts echoed throughout the castle about never being good enough, respecting that he's able to handle so many eyes on him. And the second being his unwavering care and loyalty for his friends, including SMG3, Kind of. You saw all those examples I gave? With SMG4 becoming a worse and worse friend to nearly everyone, he's slowly breaking the reasons SMG3 became good in the first place, and probably breaking everyone else's reasons to like him too. Despite the whole lesson of it's gotta be perfect being that SMG4 should care more about his friends and what he does have, he clearly hasn't learned that lesson yet, as he time and time again shoots them down only to drag them along with him because they're friends. And and although SMG3 seems to have not realized just how bad of a friend SMG4 is becoming, I suspect he's going to soon. In fact, we recently got a whole episode spotlighting it. Not on SMG4's side, but rather SMG3's in the episode You Used to Be Cool. In the episode, Eggman from Sonic realizes that SMG3 has stopped being a true villain and has become soft. And so he forced him to go to Villains Anonymous to relearn how to become a villain. Eventually, he starts regrowing his teeth when it comes to villainy, which which causes Eggman to give him one last mission to prove his villainy, killing SMG4, his arch enemy. He struggles to flashing back to all of their good moments, though he pretends to be ecstatic so he can lure Eggman to a trap and defeat him. SMG4 isn't particularly grateful about this due to SMG3 killing his meme when, again, SMG4 did the same thing to a much higher extent with Stitch Studios and told them to get over it. So what this shows us is that the reason SMG3 is accepting SMG4's treatment of him is because of the memories. Much like a lot of us probably have with our toxic relationships, whether friends, family, or exes. He holds on because it hurts to let go of the good times. But chances are this won't last forever. Once SMG3s decide they've had enough, there's a good chance of return to villainy, albeit with a far better reasoning than before. And because of that, there's a pretty good chance that if he does, some of the other cast might just follow. Just look at some of the other cast members with a similarly toxic friendship they're constantly beat down by their friends. Luigi's a prime example. Every time he shows up, he's shown to have to do everything for his brother, oftentimes forced into being the sponge for whatever consequences Mario's brewed up. I'll try not to take too long with these examples, seeing as they are as important, but just to run through a few, in Mario is fine, Mario decides he no longer wants to run his pizza spaghetti hybrid shop. And when Luigi arrives and praises Mario for his successful shop, Mario leaves him behind, causing the customers to harass, attack, and harm him because of Mario. Mario left. In My Roommate Mario, Luigi is shown to basically be the maid. And despite how Luigi is willing to put up with it for his brother's sake, when SMG4 is looking for a place to temporarily stay, it's shown that Mario didn't even tell Luigi, and begins going on about how he's excited to finally live with someone cool, in front of him, as well as give SMG4 Luigi's bed. When SMG4 initially refuses not wanting to cause conflict, Mario sends Luigi to a nightmare dimension, claiming it to be a holiday when pressed. It's also shown that Mario is an extreme overeater, and even 
after eating 20 plates of spaghetti, demands to take SMG4 cereal as well, which apparently was such a common occurrence to Luigi that he left a taser behind for SMG4. It's also revealed that on top of doing all of the cleaning, Luigi does all the groceries and cooking too. This becomes so bad that SMG4 storms out, preferring the idea of being homeless in a cardboard box to staying with Mario, to which Mario again gives away one of Luigi's things, a trailer, to SMG4. And those are just a few examples. Nearly every time Luigi's on screen, he's needlessly tortured by the writers. Boopkins is another character that's near constantly treated unfairly just for being a pacifistic weeaboo that believes in love and friendship. In I Can't Believe It's Not SMG4, the episode opens up with Boopkins playing Jenga and Mario kicking it over because he wants to invite them all to a play he's in. In the very safe and legal SMG4 show, Boopkins is thrown into a cannon multiple times and ends being tied upside down under a fiery ring for Bob's performance. In the CEO of Riz, SMG3 burns down Boopkins' anime collection. In SMG4 does a meme for one second, SMG4 makes fun of her aunt's death. And in Textures Not Found, when Boopkins tries to warn everyone about the evil clones, they're kicked back to the forest and everyone starts celebrating. Point is, SMG3 certainly wouldn't be alone in feeling like they've never been treated right by anyone. So maybe a team up is in order. Though even if it wasn't, the episode Textures Not Found does have an intriguing plot point that could theoretically come back in this arc. At the end of the episode, after they save Dr. Egad and defeat the clones, Dr. Egad explains that SMG3 actually hired him to make a copy of SMG4's crew back when he was evil. When he couldn't give them the money due to being stuck in an altered dimension thanks to SMG4, Egad simply threw the untextured clones away, which was why they then went on the attack. It should also we mentioned that every villain of the series is connected with the theme of perfection. Mr. Puzzles wanted the perfect TV show, SMG4 and It's Gotta Be Perfect wanted to make the perfect video, so what about SMG3? In this case, I'm almost certain that the arc would follow him wanting to make the perfect friend. And given that the clones prove he can get an exact copy of him, albeit if he pays his time to get the texture, then SMG3 could make an SMG4 that in his eyes is actually a good friend. And again, given how other characters have been treated, Luigi, Boop, and even Mario if you look at that GIF video, I believe that quite a lot of people would take the upgrade. So there's a bit of a problem, because due to their rules, they're obligated to be friends. We're already stated this in SMG4 and SMG3 are forced to hold hands, where SMG1 and 2, the two guardians that came before 3 and 4, fused their hands together to force them to learn to get along. But you guys have lost your way. Yeah, don't you remember? We're meme guardians! We're protectors of the universe! How could you protect anyone if you can't even get along? Which is why I imagine that, if I'm right about this arc, that SMG1 and 2 would likely play a big role in trying to help SMG4 stop SMG3 and his clone. In fact, there's another character that I feel might play a good role too, Mr. Puzzles. Those of you in the audience that are current watchers of SMG4 are probably groaning at that, but I have good reason to believe this. Now, to older fans who haven't watched Puzzle Vision, Mr. Puzzles is a newer antagonist that wants to create the perfect TV show. And to do this, he forces characters into his world, where he can puppeteer them into fitting specific roles of the show and forget about reality. After being defeated in Puzzle Vision, he returns in the episode Mario the Explorer, where Mario unknowingly finds the Puzzle Vision TV and brings it inside. This results in them being brought into the world of Dora the Explorer in a mock-up parody of the show. After a parody of the Swipe No Swiping segment where Bob the Robber Ship fairly stabs SMG4, Mario gets Mr. Puzzles to help. Now the thing about being in the shows is that if the episode reaches a conclusion, the characters are free. Given what happened in Puzzle Vision, you'd think that Mr. Puzzle would let SMG4 die, thus trapping Mario here. Especially given that not having Mario was the whole thing that foils his plan before. However, here he makes a genuine attempt to save him, getting upset with Mario when he gives the wrong things needed to save his life. By the end, though, he successfully saves SMG4 and even dances with him, all of which are surprisingly nice things to do. We also further start seeing subtle moments to foreshadow the two possibly getting along at the end of the episode. After SMG4 and Mario are freed, Mr. Puzzle explains that that was just a small taste of what he hopes to do, this time willingly, to help turn the show towards a better path in his eyes. The two walk away as Mr. Puzzle tries to convince them to see more of his ideas. However, remember that he can just suck them into a new show whenever he wants to. Frankly, he could keep them trapped like he did before, but chooses not to, trying to convince them of it of their own terms now, as desperate as he may be. We haven't gotten to see 
a lot of this yet, as we've been focusing more on the comedy zone and Maggie starting to take a liking to Mr. Puzzles. But if this continues, then it could indicate a time where they may be forced to work together. And that time is probably when SMG3 tries to replace SMG4 with an identical Knights or Doppelganger. To sum it up, the contempt theory predicts that in an upcoming arc, SMG3 and many others growing contempt for SMG4 will rise up to the point that SMG3 will try to replace him in the same way he tried to with the Textures Not Found clones back in the day. Due to SMG4 slowly pushing away all of his friends, the majority of them would rather be with the nicer SMG4 than the real one, leaving SMG4 all alone. If this arc does happen, it's very likely that we'll see the return of SMG1 and 2, who will likely try to help SMG4 stop himself from being replaced and rekindle his friendship for good, likely with the unexpected or possibly even bribed help of Mr. Puzzles. Either way, SMG4 is a pretty good show and I can't wait to see what's in store next. But what are your thoughts on the theory? Do you think SMG3 will finally have enough? Let me know in the comments below. This was Spice from Cat Cafe and I'll be seeing you. Peace!